We are excited to be here today to share with you our success stories and how we use GIS. First, I'm going to tell you a bit more about who we are and where we deliver our mission. APHIS is an emergency response agency focusing on stamping out pests and diseases across the U.S. and the world. We've been highly successful in using ArcGIS tools to target resources to high-risk states and areas. Now I'm going to give you a glimpse into how we use GIS and APHIS. Half a century ago, livestock farmers suffered large economic losses from a flesh-eating maggot, the New World Screwworm. APHIS was successful in its battle to eradicate the screwworm by using a new technology, releasing sterile screwworm flies. We eradicated the screwworm throughout the United States and all the way down to the border with South America. Flash forward, and in 2016, we mobilized into action to protect the endangered Florida key deer from being killed by a screwworm outbreak, primarily on Big Pine Key, where it had the heaviest infestation shown in red. We used story maps to communicate effectively across a variety of audiences how we protected the key deer, livestock, and you. We averted the loss to the Florida livestock industry totaling about $2 billion. California is the largest citrus producing state in the country. The U.S. is the third largest exporting country in the world. That's why APHIS takes seriously dot the spread of citrus greening. It's the deadliest citrus disease. We use mobile field apps and analytics to pinpoint areas of infestation and keep our policies up to date, like our quarantine areas that help protect production of nearly a billion dollars in California alone. APHIS protects 2.6 million Americans who travel every day. Wildlife strikes are increasing at airports, making our work even more important. We use Survey 123 to record observations of raptors on airfields at airports. This one is at Peoria International Airport. By simply removing the food source, we reduced the number of raptors by half. We face unprecedented pressure across the federal government to break down barriers, share data more openly, and move to the cloud. Sounds great. It's hard. But with the support from our agency senior leaders, we have been successful in meeting that challenge we now have a web GIS portal. We are champions of collaboration. And APHIS is vital to the trillion dollar agricultural engine that creates one in every 10 jobs in America. Now I'd like to introduce Mary Jane McCool I, who's in veterinary services. She is going to show us how we use a web GIS to prevent animal disease outbreaks. Take it away, MJ. Thank you, Shannon. Veterinary Services has a mission to keep foreign animal diseases out of the U.S. We are on the front line of defense, preventing and responding to animal disease outbreaks. WebGIS improves how we deploy our map solutions and helps us easily share information with emergency responders and decision makers. In early 2015, we experienced the largest outbreak of avian influenza, also known as bird flu. By June of 2015, 50 million birds died and egg prices went up 20 to 30 percent. At that time, maps took four to six hours to complete daily. And maps were delivered by email. It became clear to us that we needed to improve the process and WebJS was the answer. The first test of our WebJS came about this time last year. There was an avian influenza outbreak in the southeastern United States. Python scripts were used to pull data on infected farms from our system of record every 15 minutes. Maps like the one shown here were published to the portal every one to two hours, a vast improvement from the previous outbreak. Trade staff were very excited about being able to easily view impacted counties and report out to our international trade partners. To improve map delivery, we provided multiple download options. They could select from a pop-up or from a list of available maps. 
We now have WebJS templates and are better prepared for future disease outbreaks anywhere in the US. We are also putting self-service WebJS tools into the hands of our staff. In support of the program, Defend the Flock, Leah Tingley, a veterinary medical officer in Washington State, is using ArcGIS Maps for Office to manage biosecurity outreach. Biosecurity includes good farm sanitation practices to minimize introduction or spread of avian influenza. Leah's team distributes materials to feed stores where farmers purchase chickens and feed. Leah mapped the feed stores in veterinarian offices, calculated service areas, and assigned staff to distribute the materials to the stores. Leah and her team collaborate using the map, which is now published in the portal. With WebGIS, Leah is helping us successfully defend the flock. WebJS is also helping us get ahead of the virus. Using the predictive analysis tool, we evaluated the likelihood of the virus surviving in the South Carolina environment and its proximity to poultry farms. The presence of certain wild birds and ideal water conditions contribute to virus survival and were used to model risk. Many people are surprised to learn that winter poses the greatest risk. Why? because the virus prefers cold temperatures and is moving in with migratory birds. Counties highlighted have a high or very high virus survival risk. The larger circles represent a higher density of poultry farms. These counties warrant heightened awareness and increased biosecurity during winter months. With WebJS, this type of information can be shared with poultry producers and emergency planners to minimize future outbreaks. As you can see, WebJS is helping us fight avian influenza on many fronts. Next, I'd like to introduce Lisa Kenaway, who works for Plant Protection and Quarantine, to show how WebJS supports the complete data and analytics lifecycle. Thank you, MJ. So does anyone recognize this insect? This is a European gypsy moth. It was accidentally introduced into the eastern United States over 100 years ago. And unfortunately, it has now spread to its current distribution of 30 states. And in its caterpillar form, it will eat just about anything, and during years of outbreak can destroy large tracts of land, causing over $30 million per year in damage. This application from our Forest Service colleague shows the distribution of the nation's hardwood forests that are at the greatest risk from the gypsy moth. These forests span vast parts of our country, and any decline of these lands can have long-term impacts of increased erosion and flooding, reduced timber production, and health and human concerns. For years, PPQ has been supporting this important program with field data collection, risk analysis, and policy execution. We are proud of this effort where each piece supports the other, achieving a holistic approach to pest program management. And now with the adoption of WebGIS, we are able to bring all the pieces together, allowing for an interactive data sharing and decision making experience. Each year, PPQ develops a model to inform the placement of where we should place our survey traps based on the highest risk for detecting gypsy moth. We see the final result here with high to low risk areas across the country. We also see in the Northeast the hatched federal quarantine zone, an area where the moth has established and can no longer be controlled. The risk model is based on field data along with additional inputs that influence gypsy moth spread, such as human activity, climate, and food sources. The risk model then provides guidance on where to place next year's traps based on different levels of risk, and this is shown here in the black hollow circles. Using this information, along with local knowledge, we are able to strategically plan for the next survey. And now we are exploring the WebGIS dashboard to get the data, maps, and information quickly into the hands of our decision makers in a single interactive location. Managers can access maps of the risk model and the surveillance data, as well as tracking trap status across the country. This full application feeds our holistic approach and creates a higher return of investment because our surveillance is data-driven, 
targeted and adaptive to risk. And now I'd like to introduce Bryson Weber with Wildlife Services to share another success story. Thank you, Lisa. In addition to protecting our country from pests, we also protect agriculture and the public from human-wildlife conflicts. One risk to human health and wildlife is feral swine. Feral swine cause $1.5 billion in agricultural damage each year. They also carry several diseases that can be transferred to livestock and humans. Because of this, we need to continually monitor feral swine and their populations. Now, let's go to Texas, where we're estimating feral swine densities using a new technology, UAS or drones. Our National Wildlife Research Center is conducting a controlled study in a 300-acre pen with a known population of feral swine. Using a controlled environment allows us to estimate the accuracy of our methods. The way we analyze this data is with ArcGIS desktop and full motion video. Now, let's look for some pigs. There's one. It looks a little bit like a maggot. On the left, you can see the thermal video with white being hot. On the right, you can see the location of the UAS with the red rectangle being the swath width of the camera. Where the video stops, you can see there's two feral swine in the video. We can also mark these locations on a map. With UAS and thermal sensors, we can locate, count, and estimate feral swine populations, aiding us in our management activities. An additional risk to human health is the rabies virus. Rabies is 100% fatal. It is one of the most deadly viruses the world has ever seen. The biggest threat to the spread of rabies in the US is at-risk wildlife. In wildlife services, we're protecting the public by vaccinating raccoons and canines. We do this by dispersing approximately 8 million oral rabies vaccines from fixed-wing aircraft, helicopters, and hand-thrown from vehicles. Treatment zones have been created against the eastern U.S. to stop the spread of raccoon rabies on the U.S.-Mexico border to stop the reintroduction of canine rabies. We use spatial analysis to determine how to disperse these vaccines more effectively based on human populations, habitat types, and also water bodies. Using ArcGIS Pro and Python scripts, we are able to update our web map where we can now see the zone in red changed from not started to green completed. This process has historically taken several hours, but as you can see, it has been reduced to just a couple minutes. As impressive as that is, it's not the best part. The best part is we're able to disperse thousands of vaccines a day and then use our public web map to notify the public both internally and externally, including wildlife land firefighters, border patrol, and several different military bases. This type of communication helps keep ourselves and also everyone else using the same airspace safe. You just saw three amazing examples of how we use WebGIS to solve large, complicated biological problems. We're good at mapping agricultural and natural resource events, yet our ability to map our employees and facilities was tested when the triple assault of hurricanes hit us last summer. Harvey crystallized our need to improve emergency response maps. Irma reinforced the need we could not map the locations of our employees. We needed to update our authoritative data. By the time Maria hit Puerto Rico, we were able to map the right data at the right time because we had updated, automated, and shared our data with our portal. But Maria focused not only on locating our employees, but finding additional resources for them due to the severe devastation. We found the status of our facilities, whether they were open or closed. FEMA, food and water distribution centers. The GSA fuel station in San Juan, and also cell towers. We then delivered satellite phones to areas where we had yet to contact our employees. We did contact all of our employees and found them safe. We now have an operational dashboard 
that reports real-time information. So on any given day, for any given event, on any given device, we know the status of our employees and our facilities. We have succeeded with our vision of one map, one response. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.